Thanks to Skillshare for supporting Mueller, she wrote. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for our listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right. Skillshare is offering Mueller, she wrote listeners two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes for free. Just head to Skillshare.com slash AG. And thanks to Beta Brand for supporting Mueller, she wrote. Who says comfy can't be work appropriate? Beta Brand wants you to look and feel good even at the office. So go to betabrand.com slash AG, all lowercase, and get 20% off your dress pant yoga pants today. And finally, thanks to Grove for supporting Mueller, she wrote. Grove makes healthier home products accessible and affordable. Over a half a million families shop at grove.co for non-toxic dish soap, plant-based skin care, and tree-free bath tissue. For a limited time, my listeners get a three-piece cleaning set from Mrs. Meyer's Spring Scents, a free 60-day VIP membership, and a surprise bonus gift just for you when you sign up and place an order for $20 or more. Go to grove.co slash ag for details. This is Greg Oliar, the author of Dirty Rubles, and you're listening to Muller She Wrote. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That's what he said. That's what I said. That's obviously what our position is. I'm not aware of uh, any of those activities. I have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I did not have communications with the Russians. What do I have to get involved with Putin for? I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him other than he will respect me. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. So, it is political. You're a communist. No, Mr. Green. Communism is just a red herring. Like all members of the oldest profession, I'm a capitalist. Hello, and welcome to Mueller, She Wrote. I'm your host, A.G., and with me, as always, is Jaleesa Johnson. Hello. Tits McGee is on vacation. Uh, she is out today. Super sorry. She sends her love mm-hmm. and her care to you directly. But she is not here today. But, uh, uh, you know, wish her well. Yes. Good vibes. Good vibes. Um, everything's fine, though. Don't. Yeah, don't, don't forget. Yeah, don't worry too much. <laughs> they will send her, like, <laughs> send so many your messages. well wishes. <laughs> you know what I mean. She'll be happy to hear from you guys. She's not feeling super great, but, you know, she'll be better with your nice tweets she's good yeah yeah Uh, and sends her caring thoughts uh this was an incredible week of news you guys as we await Mueller's testimony coming july 17th we'll be in philly that night of course as it just turned out when the the Mueller report dropped we happen to have a live show at largo exactly it just keeps happening now as his testimony happens we're going to be in philly uh and we're going to be there as part of the Philly Podfest, which I'm super excited about. I want to meet all these podcasts. Mm-hmm. Patrons, patrons only. You'll get access to a private meet and greet the night after the show, Thursday. And if you're a ticketed patron, you can join us for a viewing of the Mueller testimony on campus at the Annenberg School of Communication on UPenn the day of the show. Woo. So if you're not a patron and you want access to these events, along with ad-free daily episodes, our upcoming video link where we strip all the time. Of course, yeah, uh, yeah. My research notes, the newsletter, and some great gifts. Head to patreon.com slash Mueller, she wrote, and uh, we'll Check set you out. up. Yeah, yeah. But Philly is going to be so much fun. I'm so glad that the Annenberg School of Communication added this event for us. Like They really did on the schedule? Like, yeah, they reached out to us, and they were like, we want to invite you and special guests to come view the Mueller testimony. That's amazing. At an Ivy League school, at the Annenberg School of Communications. I'm hoping to get an honorary doctorate when I'm I mean, there. by now, I think it's appropriate, right? I think double doctor. <laughs> That's double all you D need, just to be... watch something on campus. and I yeah. should just ask <laughs> when I get there. Just be like, hey. Um, Who do I talk to about? Nice room. <laughs> Sweet donuts. Where's my doctorate? There you go. Because, you know. I'll vouch for you. Double doctor. That'd be cool. Double D. For a double dose of pimpness. It would be <laughs> super awesome. Uh, joining us later for the interview today, 30-year prosecutor for the uh, D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office who worked closely with Mueller. Like, he worked with him on, on homicide. That's incredible. So you remember in the threat in the book, Andy McCabe's The Threat, where he where somebody came up to Mueller and was like, I wish we could do this. And he's like, well, I wish I was, you know, 
chasing murderers exactly. and homicide. But this we can't guy, have what we want. He did it with him. He worked, yeah, with him on I love homicide. It. Mueller's better days. <laughs> yeah, his the good old days, the salad days. Yeah, when, yeah. when he's like, I don't want to testify. God damn it! Mm-hmm. I want to be a murdering investigator. Exactly. Not he's not murdering. a murder. No, this is Mueller. He's a good guy. I mean, yeah, he's not going to murder it's, and investigate. Right, we're Mueller, she wrote, not murder, she wrote. So it's different. He's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I love murder, she wrote. Me though. too. Uh, so anyway, he's going to uh, Glenn Kirshner. That's who's going to be with us. Yeah, I've seen him all over MSNBC. Yeah, he's yeah. fantastic, mm-hmm. and he's good biceps. Yes, too. he's going to give us an insight into his biceps. No, he's going <laughs> to give us an insight into what questions Mueller can answer. Like, because we've talked to David Priest before, mm-hmm. who briefed Mueller on a daily basis as a, a, a CIA person. Yeah. And he, you know, he knew Mueller exactly. And he called it. He's like, Mueller's not going to do anything crazy. Mm-hmm. Chill out. Yeah. And, and now we've talked to Glenn Kirshner. He's going to tell us what we can expect from his testimony. I love that. Which is pretty much what we figured. But <laughs> <laughs> I still get to hear it from an expert. Yeah. yeah. So stick around for the interview. And July 22nd, guys, uh, we're launching our daily morning news podcast called The Daily Beans. So follow us on Twitter at Daily Beans Pod. For updates and information, any patrons of Mueller, she wrote, become patrons of the Daily Beans. You'll get ad-free episodes until we sell out. Yeah, your grandmother didn't, right? That's how we... Your grandmother <laughs> didn't. It's a matriarchy. Down with the patriarchy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, we're seriously going to give you ad-free Daily Beans episodes as a patron, along with our video link, until they tell me to stop. Yeah, so, it's a cool deal. Mm, I'm excited. We're kind of rebellious in that way. <laughs> And we'll also be in Chicago with Renato Mariotti on July 27th at Lincoln Hall. So yes. don't miss that. Anyway, guys, thank you. We have a ton of news to get to. But first, it's time for my favorite segment, Corrections. It's a mistake. It's hard for me to say I'm sorry. Oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> All right, guys. So it turns out I was correct, thank you, when I used (laughs) modus operandi. Yes. It's not modus operandum when referring to a singular. It's just modus operandi. So thank you for correcting the correction. Mm -hmm. And do I really need to look up everything people... No, I'm just taking your word for it. Exactly. And this is proof. Yes, yes. Uh, At one point during our daily updates for patrons, I mentioned that it would be hilarious if Biden picked Obama (laughs) as his vice presidential (laughs) candidate, but he cannot. Oh. The 12th Amendment requires that Veeps be eligible for the presidency. And since the 22nd Amendment limits the president to two terms, Obama would not be eligible to be the vice president. Because he wasn't born here. Right? Because he's <laughs> because he was born in Kenya. Exactly. And that, no. Because <laughs> he's been president twice already. Yes, he, yes. Yeah. If, if he's not eligible for president, he can't be the VP. That's a bummer. Lame. I know. Because, I mean, look at all the things VPs do. What up, Pence? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just think to Dan Quayle. I just think back to can't oh, yeah. spell potato guy. I dig um, it. Yeah. You you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, somebody will be like, what? <laughs> All my people over 40. What? There you go. <laughs> uh, Duncan Hunter's wife is named Margaret, not Megan. Yeah. Okay. That's our bad. Didn't want to misname her. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you know what? Um, for once... She doesn't matter. (laughs) Uh, I incorrectly referred to Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador as the Southern Triangle, but it's the Northern Triangle. And I can see how you got there, because I was looking up the Southern Triangle and it didn't exist. I guess it's the Northern Triangle for some reason. It's pretty geocentric of me, because I'm basing its location (gasps) on where I am. You're right. That's how I was thinking, too. Like, the world revolves around San Diego. (laughs) The world revolves around my ass. So I apologize for that. It's the Northern Triangle. But is there a Southern Triangle? Because I guess I looked it up and nothing came up, so I guess it's just the Northern Triangle for some reason. There's no opposite. There's yeah. a lame song called the Southern Cross, but it's old. Oh, and this is South America, so it really threw me off there. But you're right. Right. And it's south of us. It's mm-hmm. South America. Southern but it's tri- the Northern nope. Triangle. <laughs> it's not the Bermuda Triangle. It's no. the Northern Very Triangle. Very different, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Trump has pulled aid from there, probably causing refugees to <laughs> flee north. And you're going to talk about that later in Hot Notes. Oh, yeah. Very cool perception you had on Friday. Thank Stick you. around for that. Uh, I had said I thought that no president had defied a Supreme Court ruling. Incorrect. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Jackson Trump's favorite president. Oh, of course. Whose portrait hung behind him as he referred to Elizabeth Warren as Pocahontas to some code talkers. That is so gross on so many levels. Yeah. Well, he ordered the Cherokee forcibly removed from their land in Georgia after the Supreme Court ruled the government could not force them off their land. Yeah, so so nice Pocahontas dig, bro. (laughs) Cool deal, bro. Totally. No wonder you're Trump's favorite. Why is it whenever they defy a Supreme Court order, it's for racist reasons? Like, this is the pattern here. Uh, Yeah, so far. Yeah, two. two and then both racist. <laughs> both racist. 
And it was not flowers that sued Bill Clinton, uh, setting precedent that a president can be sued. It was Paula Jones. Oh, shout out. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> I forgot my 90s trivia. Yeah, yeah. Give her credit. <laughs> I lived through that, too. Uh, but I was, was also a, in college, so give me a break. It was a blur. I, 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 yeah, I feel you. <laughs> and in yesterday's Daily Update, I talked about Russian exports in relation to their interference in Libyan elections. And we'll get into details later. But aside from oil, aluminum, and steel, Russia is also trying to become the leader in agriculture. Yes, and I will get into that as well. Yeah. I'm glad that's going to be great. Mm -hmm. um, a really important story, specifically when it comes to what two Russians were arrested in Libya for. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. Yeah. So thank you all so much for your corrections. If we make a mistake, just head to MullerSheWrote.com, click Contact, select Corrections, and build us a shit sandwich. <laughs> we'll get it right eventually. All right, guys, it's time for the news, so let's jump in with just the facts. All right. As we all know, Mueller will testify before the House Intelligence and Judiciary Committees on July 17th. And while Dems are preparing their questions... Fuck boys like Gymnasium Jordan, who is Jim <laughs> Jordan, uh, Devin Nunes, Matt Gates, and King Idiot Louis Gohmert are planning to press Mueller on their tired BS talking points about the oranges of the investigation. That's origins. Right. Uh, Louis Gohmert said this week that Mueller's done some irreparable damage to some things, and he's got to answer for them. Irreparable, irreparable damage hmm. to some things. Oh, yeah, stuff. Thanks. Like the legitimacy of Trump's presidency. <laughs> Just some things. Yeah, no big deal. Uh, yes. Uh, he, he also said of Mueller's work product, the Mueller report, all 448 pages, mm -hmm. which Trump has called the Bible and yeah. has publicly praised for exonerating him. Louis Gohmert called it, or he, well, he said that it, quote, reinforced the anal opening that I believe Mueller to be. <laughs> really paints a picture. <laughs> anal opening sounds like parents trying to use the word asshole in front of a toddler oh i see that like like they spell it out like a n a l a n don't yeah. talk about the anal opening because <laughs> that's better <laughs> yeah uh most anuses are openings already unless it's yes. weirdly sewn shut and then yeah or just really tight i can see that you know i guess yeah they're out there i don't understand <laughs> Louis Gohmert, you dumb asshole. Uh, <laughs> most of these douche nozzles have supported Mueller in the past, who is a decorated war hero, right? Lifelong mm -hmm. Republican, conservative cop, uh, you know, blue lives matter. Yeah, tall glass of water. <laughs> yeah. tall it's all on the resume. <laughs> yeah. But it's fools like this that likely prevent justice officials like Mueller from wanting to testify to Congress in the first place. But if I had to put my money on anyone, I'll take Mueller. Oh, for sure. Over these clowns anyway. Yeah, he's definitely like Trump's match. And it's even insulting to say that because Trump is not really on his level, but that's the guy, like you said, that has the most influence to match Trump's right, like influence. That's, like that's putting me next to a dog turd and saying, I think the dog turds met its match. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I, probably. Get, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks. <laughs> for sure. But for reals, like they all supported Mueller. Mm -hmm. And they, I mean, Mueller was... Uh, given an additional two years as director of the FBI by congressional confirmation, a hundred to nothing. Totally. They uh, were Team Mueller one time, you know, like a, a while ago. They were. They were like, yeah. and Lindsey Graham's like, great, cool. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have picked a finer fella to do it. <laughs> Even after the report came out, again, Trump was like, yeah, exonerate it. You know, Mueller did it, you know, but like, he didn't read it, so obviously he's wrong, but he keeps going back and forth, like, and it's going to backfire on him when, it's when just, Mueller testifies. It's just so great that for so long they've been saying this 18 angry Democrats and the deep state and their, you know, creeps on a mission, et cetera. <laughs> And now they actually have to face him mm -hmm. uh, with his mouth. Like when words. you talk shit about someone and they like just walk up. You know, right. Like, what yeah. you say? Yeah. <laughs> you can't sit with us. Exactly. <laughs> it's going to be really awesome. Right. And I'm looking for That's like my favorite part of this whole thing. Yes, getting the truth out to millions of people. Sure. 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 <laughs> But watching the Republicans try to take down Mueller. Oh, that's going to be good. Especially these fuckboys. It's just going to be so yeah. hilarious to me. I'm just going to be like, oh, dude, mm -hmm. dude. Like, nice try. They got trampled by Joyce Vance. Yeah. And John Dean. Exactly. And Barb McQuaid. They don't stand a chance with Mueller. I'm really betting on that. And even if Mueller's, like, chill and not, he doesn't have to scream or anything. Just the words he chooses are just so good. Like I know. What if he just looks at him and says, I'm not answering your stupid Exactly. Even that will make them look stupid. Like, just the way that he speaks. He knows what my, he's doing. Look at my jaw. Do I look? <laughs> does this jaw look like it's going to answer your dumbass question? <laughs> Eat shit and die. Yeah, Where's I'm really excited. Robert De Niro, come sitting behind me. Could you answer this? 
just <laughs> right <laughs> just to have him answer the dumb questions absolutely handle my lightweight yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, also this week, Stephen Koch has been barred from the banking industry in a cock block move, mm. pending a resolution to his indictment on bribery charges for lending Manafort $16 million in exchange for a job as Secretary of the Army. Not even worth it. <laughs> during the Trump campaign. So if you recall, Koch worked for this tiny bank, Koch, in <laughs> Chicago that specialized in lending to veterans. Uh, but Koch approved a huge loan for Manafort, who's not a veteran. Not a veteran at all. And that loan was nearly a quarter of the bank's annual revenue. People were like, um, are you sure? All in exchange. And he sent him a list of jobs. He really wanted to be Secretary of the Army. Right. He really wanted to be Secretary of the Army. Mm-hmm. And there Come was on, some bro. reason for that. Jordan brought it up, but uh, I can't Well, remember. he's an Army veteran. Oh, there we go. Okay. But then he also sent him like, oh, and if I have to be an ambassador, here's the countries <laughs> I would be an ambassador for. And right. He listed them all. Singapore was on the end of the list. It mm-hmm. was just a funny thing. Yeah, really weird. And the reason I bring up Singapore is because Singapore was at the Mayflower meeting. Oh, and that might Katie be part McFarlane of it. Katie McFarlane ended up who got fired from being the deputy national to, security advisor right, to, to Flynn. Flynn. Mm-hmm. Ended up being the the, 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 ambassador. Singa- the Singaporean ambassador. There's something thing? about yeah, Singaporean. I mean, I don't know for sure, but it sounds like it. Okay, cool. Singaporeans. We got a head nod from Connor in the studio. Nice, Singapore. nice. Shout out. <laughs> Whale's vagina. Whale's vagina. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, we learned a lot of this from Discovery when his wife filed for divorce. <laughs> this is so great. Yeah. We, we remember that? He, she filed for divorce and like asked for all these bank documents. And we're like, oh, shit, we're going to find everything about this cock fella. Yep. From his wife filing it for divorce. It always happens like that. Like Hoffler, his daughter sold him out, which Hoffler. rightfully so. Hoffler. 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 <laughs> and so at the time, Manafort was working for Trump for free. And his Ukraine money train had dried up, toot toot, <laughs> and he still owed Deripaska like $19 million from that telecom deal gone bad. He'd already been sued twice by him, and he was attempting to pay Deripaska back, make whole, by giving him internal polling data. Make the anal opening Not an again. anal opening. This is a different <laughs> kind Very of different poll. Very different <laughs> Good callback. Yeah. Uh, by giving him internal polling data uh, via Rick Gates. He mm-hmm. said, Rick Gates, make it so. Right. Uh, engage my tea. And then <laughs> Cock never got a job with the Trump administration, exactly. by the they way. Exactly, they totally screwed him on that. So it was just a squid pro. There was mm-hmm. no crow. <laughs> and and now he's facing prison time as a divorcee barred from the banking industry, proving yet again everything Trump touches dies. Yeah, yeah. Do not try to get a job with the Trump administration. Right. He did a, a good job all these decades of making himself look like he was like this, you know, golden figure that just made everything like make so much money. And now it's all. And he might have been until the day he wanted to become secretary of the army. That too. Yeah. Or I was talking about Trump specifically. Like oh, he, I was talking pe- about. Cop. Yeah. People want to work with him like Goldstone because they're like, oh, I just set up a meeting because he's Trump. I didn't think he was like a criminal. And Maybe it's some weird like Jacob Wool situation where you just want to be famous, even if, if it's for the wrong reason. Totally. Like yeah. a Tommy Lahren. Figure. It'll be the downfall of these guys for sure. A bunch of it's like mosquitoes, like you know, going to the light, you know, like just like to their own death. Oh, moths, moths. Yeah, sorry, I didn't even. They're uh, flying I was things, like, blood sucking toward the light. What <laughs> vampires? No, that too. backwards. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you, moths. Before that correction comes in the email, you can just delete that now, yep. guys. Yep. Don't worry. Stop typing. We know it's moths. We figured it out. <laughs> uh, and this week in what took you so long? Richard Neal in the House Ways and Means Committee is suing the IRS and the Treasury, Steve, <laughs> to get the past six years of Trump's personal and business tax returns, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this fight started a while ago when Neal requested the returns under Section 1603 of the tax code, which says the IRS shall furnish whatever tax return the House Ways and Means Committee asks for. No questions asked. Pretty much. Yeah. No qu- Motive not important. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve and the IRS, we, we like to call Mnuchin Steve because yeah, it he bothers like him. It, yeah. <laughs> Steve and the IRS, uh, Steve, <laughs> new department in the government, Steve, <laughs> and uh, the IRS, both of the guys, the general counsel and the IRS commissioner, friends of Trump's, mm-hmm. uh, appointed with priority over Bill Barr, meaning that his taxes were more important, were more important than the Mueller report yeah. <laughs> than the Russian collusion. Prioritize your scandals. I get hey, that. Oh. Yeah. yeah, he really doesn't want us to see what's going on with Deutsche Bank, who, mm-hmm. by the way, is firing like 20,000 employees this week. Right. And pretty much shutting down. And they released some information on, uh, was it Kush or someone? Recently, they dropped some, some bombs. They, yep, they've been. And yeah. uh, mostly been working with Tish James. Oh, yeah. Attorney General of New York. Love She's her. such a badass. Mm-hmm. And she keeps tweeting at Trump like, Calm down, bro. bro. Mm-hmm. Not above the law. See you tomorrow. Call me Tish. <laughs> that should be like a hashtag. Yeah. Call, Call me, me Tish. tish. <laughs> my name is my name is Letitia. 
Call me Tish. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. So anyway, Steve and the IRS said they would not provide the tax returns, citing the motive of Congress as being political in nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Richard Neal issued subpoenas, uh, which have been ignored twice. And even though it's not required by law, he gave legislative reasons for wanting the tax returns, including a review of the IRS presidential audit. Uh, There's supposed to be a program that audits presidential tax returns. Well, that's overdue. He wants to see if it works. (laughs) And to determine whether or not Trump benefited from his own tax bill. Yeah. And that's a new legislative reason. I like and I that thought one. that that was interesting because they're like, look, we might need to uh, write counter legislation to this tax bill if it is shown that Trump is personally benefiting. Absolutely. They wrote that tax bill on napkins. They rushed that through. They <laughs> knew they were going to lose in the midterms. They felt it. People yeah. were so mad that Trump was elected and they that was the number one priority, that fucking tax bill. Yeah, so that is a super legislative reason. Like, we might need to look at the tax bill and write new legislation just because of this you. personally benefits. <laughs> just because yeah. of you and Thanks, your Trump. stupid face. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, the, they gave legislative reasons, uh, which they didn't need to, but they did. And then, and then Trump's like, oh, it's political. And, and they're like, doesn't matter. Whatever you say, bro. It, <laughs> I could say, I hate your face yeah. and you have to give me your tax returns. Right. There's the court has no say in this. And, and there are two cases that give precedent for that. Beautiful. Where they were super political and the court said, doesn't I doesn't matter. But yeah, you got to. And Trump just doesn't respect the courts at all. So it's really interesting to see how this will play out. I can't wait for him to defy a court order. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's the Supreme so, Court, too. Oh, gonna, my goodness. I, mean, I, I hate to say I can't wait for us to be in a constitutional we crisis. We just need something to break. And that cause... is literally the only thing that would turn yeah. uh, the Senate uh, Republicans. And don't at me with your, <laughs> they'll never turn. Yes, I know. That's the point, is that they're already so corrupt that if this doesn't do it, nothing will. That is my point. Exactly. And I'll say it again so that you can hear me because I still get emails <laughs> about this. If defying a Supreme Court order does not turn Senate Republicans, nothing will. Right. Okay, that's my point. I like that point. Thank you. Uh, so anyway, this lawsuit states that there has never been a case where the IRS successfully blocked a request from the tax or from the House Ways and Means Committee. So hopefully this will work its way through the courts quickly. Uh, I think the courts know that there's a, a public interest and they, they tend to schedule things faster when there is. You mm-hmm. saw how fast the uh, Deutsche Bank Capital One and Mazar's cases went through. Hell yeah. And, and that's because there's a national public interest. So once they have his taxes... Uh, the House Ways and Means Committee, they aren't supposed to release them to the public unless they feel there's a public interest, hmm. which there is. Definitely. So let's hope we get them before the election. That's oh all my I can say. Yeah, it's enough time, right? It's already making its way. I think it's more than plenty mm-hmm. of time. And I think we will get them before the election. And I'm thinking that, you know, a lot of people say, what took him so long? Why did he wait three months? I think he's trying to push this into the next Supreme Court session so that it drops right in the middle of election oh, season. Oh, that's smart. I guess, but I hate I know the it's not fact morally that like holding sound. off for <laughs> political reasons uh, is... That's what Pelosi's doing, though. They yeah. All, they all do this. Yeah. Their kids are dying. They so, want the same end game. Yeah, but they're wasting time. Right. And yeah. I think what they figure is, yes, kids are dying now, but if Trump is elected, they'll die for four more years. We mm-hmm. have to make Trump not elected. So that's their game. They're, I get that it's tough to be a politician. I mean, I don't want to give them too much credit, but I get these are really tough decisions. But I also agree with you that we shouldn't wait. I mean, it's better than doing nothing, but I, I, I wish they would just go through with it already. They're probably afraid of the cycle dying down before the election, right? The new cycle of like doing... They just want to keep it up there. Yeah, and, but we can keep the pressure on while also saving kids now, I think. Well, as a veteran, it makes me angry that they would politicize a decision like this. For sure. And even though it's for the right reasons, it's still tough. It's like when Obama drone places like, yeah, you killed less people, but people still die. I get it. Politicians have tough choices. That's why I'm not one. For they many really want to win 2020. That too. But I think they'll I win. I really want to make sure that Trump is held to account. And I think both can happen if they just do all this now. Because it'll take so long to go through these processes anyway to get the it people. It would have to... taken a lot less time had if, they opened an impeachment inquiry. inquiry. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right about that. Like, but Pelosi, then it wouldn't be in listening. the middle of the election. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I know. But the cycle's already started. The campaign season's already here. Yeah, we're only seven months to the primary. Yeah, so. it's going to fly by. A lot of weird shit this week, by the way, happened with the 2020 census citizen citizenship citizenship. Say that five times fast. 2020 citizenship question. <laughs> and this week I'll go over now. <laughs> uh, I seriously, a lot of shit went down. Oh yeah, with this, with beyond the, the SCOTUS making a ruling, <laughs> kicking it back down to the courts. The court thinking it was over, and then Trump tweeting, I and then the Department right of Justice going, "Oh yeah, sorry, we." 
I don't even know. Uh, mm, they're scared of him. They saw what he did to Sessions, and they're like, I don't want to become Sessions. Totally. I yeah. saw that bit on Matto. Absolutely. We're, yeah. We're, NPR, we're, too, talked about it. Yeah. yeah. She's like, imagine you were this guy who's been there the whole time, and mm-hmm. it's like, I saw the last time. Even if you're a good guy, what you're worried happened? about your reputation, your family being threatened. Trump is a mobster. Like Specifically he, a 16-year veteran mm-hmm. in the Department of Justice as a lawyer who now has no standing because he's already or, worked for trump <laughs> it's already right he's no, yeah. no credibility with the court he's like oh shit yeah he what should he, just resign he totally should and not because he's a dickhead but no. because it's just the right thing just be like i gotta get the fuck out of yeah. here uh, peace out but and, he's probably looking out for his family and the money and security it's tough man i i don't think it's right to not resign but i kind of get it they're just cornered and they're looking he'll be all right the, write a book sure write a book i'll read i'll buy it get a book deal <laughs> so many book one. deals out there right now <laughs> uh so Anyway, we'll talk about that in Mm -hmm. in Hot Notes. And this week, the Inspector General Horowitz, Trump's Inspector General, released a scathing report about the concentration camps at the border, complete with photos, which haven't which i haven't seen as part of an ig report in a long time usually they don't put photos out interesting i didn't know that yeah it's usually just words yeah this had a lot of photos uh but it had a lot of photos in it and the ig painted a really gruesome portrait of what it's like to be detained in the border patrol facilities in five different locations uh surprise visits most of the visits that like the ones that aoc did they Mm -hmm. had a 40 hour 48 hour notice and they were still shitty wow so they had they had two days to clean up their act and they didn't it was still gross right so this was 10 times worse oh my goodness refugees were packed in rooms meant for half as many people they were drinking out of toilets and when i say that and a lot of uh, trump supporters been like hey the water fountain's on the back of the toilet asshole don't be a dickhead oh my god uh, the water fountain was broken and they were telling the people to drink out of the toilet bowl oh my goodness uh, yeah. standing room only for over 40 days you can't even sleep and the inspector general said the conditions were a ticking time bomb right mm-hmm. terrifying uh, mm-hmm. and this week another toddler died in custody that makes seven so far seven children so far since december i'm not even counting the adults and the ones that they haven't told us about probably right these are just the ones we know about uh and and on top of all that trump doubled down on his cruelty policy by removing protections for deportation for families of active duty service members That's right. just pulled that program yeah war on immigrants yeah no uh, reason just uh, i love the troops but not the ones married to brown people exactly and he canceled the translator program for asylum seekers oh, in the court shit. just canceled it you don't need one if the judge deems one necessary you can go find one in the hallways and if they're not there too bad deal he's with it. just chipping away at all of this yeah, so it's really totally horrible. So please join us July 12th at one of over 500 planned vigils, marches, and rallies with lightsforliberty.org. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a huge thing. We're yeah. going to be here in San Diego. So for more information, lightsforliberty.org. We'll see you there. Yeah, we'll definitely be there. Also this week, Pence was about to leave D.C. to speak at an opioid rehab center in New Hampshire when he was called back before Air Force Deuce could take (laughs) off. Didn't about face. (laughs) Aircraft too. Uh, No one knows why he was called back other than maybe the Revolutionary War needed him to guard the airport. Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Uh, Though it was right after crazy, uh, like a super crazy Trump Twitter tantrum about his foundation, the Trump Foundation, against Tish James. I like, didn't notice that connection. He, he, New York AG it up. He's like, you're a terrible person. Yeah. It's just after me, witch hunt, mm-hmm. whatever. And and it was right then, and then Pence got called back. I don't know if they're related. Yeah, I thought it was probably Iran related, but no, that, that makes more sense that during that tweet storm, yeah. Yeah, and, and the White House said it had nothing to do with national security or anything like that. Chill out, everyone. We'll tell you maybe in a couple weeks yeah, if we feel like it. nothing to see here. So uh, I don't know. It's hard to trust them when they say nothing's wrong because, like, you want to believe when a president says that, that they mean it. But with this administration, it's like the president that cried wolf, you know, or like whatever, or nothing's happening. But something's always happening with him. I'm dying to know what it is. Like, was there an emergency conversion therapy session? Right? Even if it's that, I want to know. (laughs) Mother didn't want him around women in rehab? That makes sense. It's got to be that one. Yeah. But just like, just tell people something. Don't say nothing to see here because we don't trust you already. Like, give us a reason. We may not believe your reason, but give us something. <laughs> like, it's better than just saying, I don't know. When when they say don't worry about it, that worries me more. Maybe he had an emergency where he had to get back because they're printing the census now. And mm-hmm. he had to replace the word Caucasian with the word white before they put the census really? out. Really? Maybe that's. Is that real though? No. Okay. I was like, that one sounds like convincing. <laughs> We should play like two truths and a lie or something about yeah, the Trump it's, administration. It's, 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 why Pence had to go back. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, we'll be right back. Muller She Wrote is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators. With more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more, you'll discover countless ways to fuel your curiosity, creativity, and your career. 
You can take classes in social media marketing, mobile photography, creative writing, or even illustration. And whether you're looking to discover a new passion or start a side hustle, or like me, just keep up your adult learning, Skillshare is there to support your goals in lifelong learning. So it's a really great, um, it's a really great service. So Jaleesa, you recently took a class on Skillshare. Yeah, absolutely. It was a music production class called FL Studio 20 Beginners Course. So you learn how to make beats and basically something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And I usually usually go to YouTube and look up videos, but this was like so comprehensive. Like they really invest in the course and make sure you know all the steps along the way. So I appreciate that. That is fantastic. I need to learn to make beats now that I'm a doctor. Hell yeah, you got bars too. You got mad freestyle skills. Right. Right, because perfect. Doctor is way more legit than MC. I like so. that. Dr. AG. It's like Dr. Dre, but like, you know, cooler. Totally. Yeah. I need to learn that. I need to learn how to make beats. Definitely. So anyway, guys, join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a free special offer just for our listeners. So you get two months free of Skillshare. That's right. Skillshare is offering Muller She Wrote listeners two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes in all sorts of subjects. So to sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash AG. Again, that's Skillshare. Skillshare.com slash AG to start your two months now. Once again, Skillshare.com slash AG. You'll be glad you did. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, So this week, a military court found Gallagher not guilty. This is one of the seals that we thought was going to be pardoned. Right. Not an actual seal. It'd be cuter that way. But no, this is a (laughs) Navy seal. (laughs) He's an otter. Yeah, murderous otter. Hey. (laughs) God. Well, they found him not guilty on six counts, including murder, but they found him guilty on one count of posing with a corpse. Uh, and that count carries a maximum of four months. And we thought he would get time served since he's been in the brig longer than that awaiting trial. Mm-hmm. But surprisingly, the jury came back and sentenced him to the full four months. Nice. And they broke him down in rank from an E7 to an E6. And they docked his pay about 2500 a month for three months. Oh, my God. That's money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like... Seventy five hundred dollars, bro. That's, that's a lot to me. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, yeah, I guess maybe monthly. If you, if you don't have a car payment, maybe. right? If you're docked <laughs> maybe down now, that's, that's, that's your whole car payment. Right there. <laughs> he is in San Diego, so it's kind of not yeah. that much money. Uh, but I thought for sure Trump would pardon him on the Fourth of July. I thought he was going to get up in the rain and be like, "We rammed the ramparts, <laughs> we rammed the man parts. That's right. We took the airports, mm-hmm. and I'm pardoning that Gallagher fella." But his teleprompter went out. Maybe so, he was about to. Yeah. And- <laughs> maybe he was planning to, and it was in the teleprompter speech, but he's just so bad at even oh, reading what he's supposed to talk about. I hope somebody just unplugged it. Like, they read it, and they're like, fuck this. <laughs> like, you think, you read your own speech. Yeah. It's 20 minutes long. You're like, I'm going to go over this. I'm going to talk about the Revolutionary War. We're going to do some <laughs> lyrics from the Star Spangled Banner. Going to pardon this Navy SEAL. Right. His name is Gallagher. Like, just rem- I would just remember the smashing a watermelon with the Oh, nice. Hammer. That's good. And yeah. then... We just say, God bless America. And right, then wrap done. it up. Like, you get it in your head. Mm-hmm. He can't even do that. He doesn't read. He doesn't practice. He doesn't write anything. And like. his teleprompter <laughs> goes out and he's lost. Yeah. He starts like improv and not like, in the funny way. Like everything that he was talking about before, it just is gone because he was reading it. And mm-hmm. this and somebody actually put out a really interesting article. If you're a poor reader, if you're not good at reading or reading comprehension, you have to spend all your energy on just reading so oh. that you can't think about what you're reading about. Yeah, there's no, like, delivery to it, right? Right. Yeah. It's like when I was first learning to play guitar and sing, I had to focus so much on what chords I was playing, I couldn't sing at the same time, but then eventually you get so good and you could sing, and yeah. then eventually I got so good I could sing and play guitar and think about what I was doing Hell yeah. next week. <laughs> uh, but he can't... He can't multitask? Anything beyond reading aloud, any any, and once it's gone... <gasps> Everything that he was saying before is it's gone, gone with him. Yeah, yeah. And that's either just you're a poor reader or you're in the third stage of syphilitic dementia. Which or both. Mm, just Honestly, saying. I mean, that's like a real medical possibility. Like with the Epstein stuff, just hearing about all the his escapades, like it's just a probability. We're going to get emails for syphilis shaming. We it. will. But you know what? I don't think it's the fault of any of the victims. I think it's Trump just being gross and like, you know, being a whore. There are. Uh, and you know what? No, I'm not whore shaming. Right, right. For sure. Right, just just Trump shaming. I guess I, yeah, I should say. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I'm not even I'm not even syphilis shaming, you know. No, you know, not at all. Take These are just possibilities that he could have. See from a doctor, patterns. get rid of it. I think that was advice that the yeah, <laughs> Maven you, Johnson's you can dad cure gave him syphilis, in the jerk. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even if you couldn't, I, I think yeah. Don't was, trust Whitey. Lo- Lord loves a working man. See a doctor and get rid of it. I there think you those go. are the three pieces. Words of to advice. live by. Yeah, yeah Trump missed that memo. <laughs> Yeah, he totally did. Uh, but I, I honestly think that this kind of dementia can come from uh, late stage syphilis. And I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. 
have that checked because uh, I, I don't really think that his crazy long haired doctor or that uh, sugar pill guy, the guy candy man, the right. candy man. I remember him. Yeah. Ronnie, mm-hmm. whatever. I don't think that they're really good doctors. Right. And like you would think with all that money or, you know, the money he had, like he would get that fixed. But Trump is such a weirdo. Like, I don't know if he would go to a doctor or like say I, I feel have... like he would lie to his doctor yeah. like he lies to us like lies no everything's lawyers. great my brain's awesome right I don't think he like even is honest with his therapist if he has one like he just seems like he'll take these things to the grave yeah he's like a really uncool Johnny Karate there you go all right guys so uh, new, other news here the inspector general this is the IG Horowitz the guy who just released the scathing report on the conditions at the border in the facilities mm-hmm. so the inspector general is finally investigating the FBI Hoover building scandal and this is the scandal where Trump probably allegedly stopped the FBI from moving out of the crumbling, decrepit Hoover building in Washington, D.C., downtown, (laughs) into the burbs. Uh, They've been planning it for 10 years. Uh, But Trump probably stopped it because he was afraid or he knew that the old FBI building would be bought by a hotel hotelier yeah. by a, a developer who was going to build a hotel and that would compete with his downtown dc hotel and he's a giant baby this is why we have the emoluments clause the <laughs> exact reason yes so the plan like i said had been in the works for a decade and when the chief of the gsa emily murphy testified to congress she said oh this was the fbi's idea it was all the fbi's idea trump had nothing to do with it hmm. she conveniently omitted the part where she had a meeting in the oval office with trump about this <laughs> And there's photos of that meeting. Right. Never met her. Because Trump can't get over an Instagram moment. Right. Uh, But both she and Christopher Wray, the FBI director, told Congress that the idea to remain in the Hoover building was the FBI's totally our idea and that Trump had nothing to do with it. After 10 years of all this planning and work. Wray's a tool, man. That guy. Who just did it? Uh, We all know this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. And now the inspector general is looking into it. We'll probably get the report in a few months. Usually takes a few months to get a report. So why does this matter? Uh, It's clearly another abuse of power, which is an article of impeachment to throw on the pile, right? And the longer the articles of impeachment document is, the dumber Senate Republicans look when they acquit him. Right. How can you, like, dismiss every single accusation, right? You have to break it apart with facts because these people are doing their work. Like, the inspector general deserves so much props for all of this, like, not journalism, but all this documentation. All these investigations. Absolutely. Like, he is killing it. Like, it's, it's just, it's sad that this even has to happen, but he's really delivering the truth in a way that I wouldn't expect a Trump official to do. Right, Horowitz. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and and maybe one of the reasons Pelosi is stalling opening an impeachment inquiry is mm-hmm. because of this. Yes. She wants this super long list. Of documents and evidence. Because she said, we have to have an ironclad case. I talked to uh, my... We have to dot all the I's and cross the T's. Absolutely. Uh, my rep in, in my district, Susan Davis, I talked to her people at this festival yesterday and they were saying the same thing. They're like, we're not against impeachment. We're just waiting for these hearings. We're waiting for more evidence. All these Democrats that are like, they have a safe you know, district, they're waiting for... I don't like Susan Davis. Oh, well, you know, Jose Caballero is running against her. Okay. I'm all I'm down for that. Yeah, yeah. Because she really does have a safe seat. I don't know if she's willing to like take things to where they need to be because she's, she's a little too yeah she's a little too a little uh, too cozy middle of the road for <laughs> exactly. me exactly but um, she's done great things but there could be better people in her position for sure absolutely mm-hmm. we need more progressive people we do yeah pass the torch Biden <laughs> <laughs> pass the torch I'm still holding on to that torch <laughs> So I still think we should open an impeachment inquiry. Mm -hmm. Uh, We should have done it months ago when we took the House back because we'd be way further along in getting all the evidence and testimonies and uh, and grand jury material we need to move forward. And I personally think that stalling impeachment for political purposes, and we talked about this earlier, is the wrong move, especially given the concentration camps. Children are dying. They are dying. Borderline death camps, right? Like, what are we going to call this if it's by accident that they're dying? Yeah. They're still dying. And is that worth a political gambit? Right. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I hope. Pelosi comes out at the end and throws down a, I don't know, what what do you throw down? A mic? Oh, yeah, mic drop. Something, and just goes, <laughs> bam, bitches. Yeah, and then just walks out of the room and there's something. an explosion and she's wearing the coat with the glasses. Dude, that's my really... fantasy. I doubt it will happen that way, but I hope so. I hope she's <laughs> right. Uh, we found out this week that Trump can't just leave well enough alone, or the 4th of July alone. <laughs> Not only did he use footage from his sad dick energy parade to make a political ad paid for by the taxpayers, Mm -hmm. which is illegal. Yeah, pass the savings on to you. (laughs) (laughs) The fireworks for his small mushroom extravaganza were donated by Phantom Fireworks in Ohio, just like a phantom penis, Mm. uh, who interestingly, (laughs) they lobbied him to stop tariffs uh, on imports from China. And as it turns out, Trump delayed the tariffs on the same day 
that the Chinese firework distributor donated upwards of $750,000 in fireworks. How do you get bribed with fireworks? To Trump's insecurity party. <laughs> Chinese fireworks at that. Not oh, even okay. made in the USA. I guess they're really cool there. <laughs> uh, in fact, the fireworks spelled out made in the USA because if you can't lie all the way, don't lie. So ironic, yeah. And if you think that's weird, so do the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Mm. They have launched an investigation into the potential squid pro crow. So we'll see what happens. But that is uh, that is one tiny tiny investigation mm -hmm. in, in the, the big thousand. fireworks display of investigation in the, in the giant fireworks display <laughs> one little spark and we haven't even gotten to the finale yet so. <laughs> the finale Zoltan has a joke about how everyone says this is the finale and I literally heard someone saying that during the 4th of July I just walked past the house and she's like this is the finale and I thought of Zoltan <laughs> it reminded me of when uh, we had the big bay boom and they all went off at once yeah it's about a decade ago. Yeah, the Russians did it. Seven no. years ago, I think. It <laughs> yeah, was totally we the hacked. Russians. They hacked our fireworks. <laughs> uh, but no, they s launched all the fireworks at once. And everybody on the beach is like, yeah. It was so beautiful. Yeah. And then everyone's like, we should run away. And then it all started. Because it was just so loud. Yeah. And that's like 10 seconds. It was really intense, it was I like heard, 30 right? 30 seconds. Yeah, it yeah. It was crazy. I was there. It was funny. Nice. There's uh, probably a video on YouTube. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at it like. Everyone's running away, and I'm just staring at, like, somebody's fired. That's you in the apocalypse. Just going to stare into it. Yeah, I'm just going to look right into it. <laughs> Might as well. I can't Bring be it. saved. <laughs> Bring it. I'm a rabbit in your headlights. Uh, so, anyway, it was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Michigan Republican Congressional Representative Justin Amash declared his independence this week on the 4th of July <laughs> from the Republican Party. By saying Democrats and Republicans equally suck and he's above it all. <laughs> oh, I hate that. But I mean, I'm glad he left the GOP. But don't uh, compare that's us. That's a stupid thing. It's he's, a stupid argument. He's the only Republican in Congress calling for the impeachment of Trump. Cool. But mm -hmm. he also voted against the Equal Rights Act, the Violence Against Women Act. Mm -hmm. He voted against that and voted to allow employers to discriminate against LGBTQ plus people. So what does he have a problem with then? If he's for all of that, like what, what did Trump do that pissed him off? As long as he doesn't join my party, I don't give a shit where he goes. That's fair. Uh, I'm, and split I'm, the vote for the GOP. I'm hoping he runs as an independent and mm -hmm. Jill Stein's Trump in yeah. 2020. I want him to Jill Stein Trump. Right. I gotta look up what, what his argument was though. Like, I know why we hate Trump, but like, if he's this kind of shitty person. Well, he's like, just like, uh, politics is spiraling down the toilet and mm. he didn't necessarily pin it on one party. He said okay. both parties. Are but to blame. he's a part of the problem too, with all those fucking yeah. voting well, against that shit. Yeah, I mean, he, to me, his only use is educating his constituents on what's really in the Mueller report, and that's fair because he did get that one lady. Right? Yeah, you're right. She's like, I had no idea. I thought he was exonerated. Yeah, that lady. <laughs> Plus one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one at a time, right? <laughs> In this week, uh, let's see, Psy Group is back in the news. It's been a while. If you recall, Psy Group was owned by Joel Zamel, who was paid $2 million by George Nader, pedophile, after Trump was elected, and Zamel took part in the August 3rd, 2016 Trump Tower meeting arranged by Eric Prince for Zamel, Nader, and Jr. And at the time uh, of that meeting, Zamel had already drawn up a multi-million dollar proposal for a social media manipulation effort to help elect Donald Trump. Seth Abramson calls this meeting the biggest news story of 2018. Yeah, it, it's huge. It happened in 2017, but he said it broke in 2018. It's the biggest story of the year. And that was in our Mueller Palooza episode. Yeah. End of the year. Um, though it didn't show up in the Mueller report. And it was likely handed off, maybe, when he right. closed up shop because it wasn't mentioned. Mm -hmm. But this week, we learned from Israeli media that their justice ministry appears to be blocking access to and potentially trying to wipe Psy Group's computers in a lawsuit against them. Uh, it's being posited that it has to do with Psy Group working to oppose the BDS movement. And the BDS movement is a Palestinian-led campaign promoting various forms of boycott against Israel until it meets what the campaign describes as Israel's obligations under international law. Yeah, the constitution for them, yeah, yeah. Such as withdrawal from occupation territories, removal of the separation barrier in the West Bank, and uh, full equality for Arab-Palestinian citizens I mean, that's Israel. reasonable. <laughs> and it would be very interesting if the government of Israel were working in secret to wipe the computers of Psy Group, which was actively opposing the pro-Palestinian movement. Oh, yeah. Classic corruption mm. move. I can even see the U.S. doing some shit like this. So. We did. Yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> right, right. We, We've had C to. C-2016. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Psy Group was even there. Yeah, good point. Uh, so let's see. There's been another indictment in the one MDB case, and we're going to cover that in Hot Notes. Mm -hmm. Angelisa, you have a story about two Russians arrested in Libya for election interference, so we'll stick around for that. Yep. And finally, late Friday. All right, stick with me because this is confusing <laughs> because it involves Jerome Corsi. He filed a reply late Friday to Mueller's opposition to Corsi's motion for leave to file a second amended complaint 
in his individual capacity. So what does that mean? Yeah. Because <laughs> it took me eight times of reading that to figure it out. <laughs> well, Corsi sued Mueller, right? And he also sued the FBI and the CIA and the NSA, saying they tried to force him to lie about his relationship with Roger Stone and Julian Assange. They tried to force me to perjure myself. <laughs> Or, or they told me I would spend my life in prison. Yeah, the old perjury trap starring Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> the perjury trap. <laughs> so th- he filed this lawsuit uh, mm-hmm. against after he turned down Mueller's plea deal. So then Mueller filed a motion to dismiss Corsi's case. Mm-hmm. You're stupid. He said, you're stupid. <laughs> and then Corsi filed an amendment to his complaint. Oh. Okay. And everyone gets one amendment complaint. That's a freebie. Okay. And Mueller filed to dismiss that too. Then, in order to file a second or third or fourth amended complaint, you have to get permission from the court. Mm-hmm. So Corsi filed a motion for leave to file a second amendment complaint. <laughs> leave to file is a fancy term for, uh, I was asking the court, he asked the court if he could file a second amendment, right. amended complaint. Then Mueller filed an opposition to that. <laughs> and, and Mueller filed it by himself. Oh. So it wasn't Mueller at all. It wasn't Mueller, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA. He's like Robert Well, because honestly, Swan. how do you, how do you uh, respond on behalf of the entire intelligence That's community? Tough, He's like, yeah. I'm just going to respond myself. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, he apparently has a problem with this. Oh. Uh, so he, he just filed it on his own and not on behalf of the other defendants. Uh, so now this new filing Corsi has put in is his reply to Mueller's opposition of Corsi's request to file a second amended complaint. And I think the basis for this argument is that Mueller is by himself, like I said, and he's not speaking for the other the at agencies, all, the yeah, other yeah. defendants. It's really poorly written. Corsi's uh, or Mueller's? Corsi's. Oh, okay, I would imagine. Reply to Mueller's reply yeah. to his request for a second It sounds like when you're just complaint. like fighting online or something, like, you know, it's you go back so and forth. Yeah. That would be so funny if on Facebook you had to do that. Oh, my uh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. My reply to your second amended complaint. I'm sorry, you want to complain again? You're going to have to get permission from the court. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really, this is really a poorly written thing. They're yeah. like, hey, people did it once. Uh, you shouldn't. Hey, he taunted me to lie. <laughs> He can't do it. Bye. The and entitlement. He's, he has so much confidence to keep appealing Mueller. Like, that's crazy. Mueller's like, dude, I really need to file another opposition to your bullshit yeah. shit. And, and Mueller will probably file a reply to his reply mm-hmm. as to why he should get a second amended complaint. And he'll be like, he shouldn't get one. Yeah, saying quit your shit, bro. And Mueller's <laughs> just like, nah. Yeah, like, it's he not just files work. things to say, nah, brah. They're and, either stalling <laughs> or they feel so privileged that this is something they just do all the time. Like, I'm just going to keep pushing it to see what, like... How many amended complaints can I file? Right. He's not going to get this one. Beans on him not getting the ability to file his second amended yeah, complaint yeah. and beans on his lawsuit being totally dismissed by the court because it's so dumb. Right, it's got to be Someone just needs to time. indict him. Just yeah. indict him. Yeah, I'm tired of course. Of He's asshole. been in a fancy indictment league forever. Right, because he had that plea deal and then went public saying, look, at he tried to get me to lie. And yeah. Like, no, that's a plea deal. <laughs> you leaked it, bro. <laughs> you accept it or you don't. It's cool. Uh, and coming up this week, this is a new thing where I want to talk about what's happening in the coming week. Monday, we should expect the transcribed testimony from Krista Jones on the citizenship question. She's a longtime Census Bureau employee who currently serves as the chief of staff to the Bureau's deputy director, Ron Jarman, which just looks like Ron Jeremy to me. <laughs> She was apparently in touch with the Grand Wizard of Gerrymandering, Huffheller, mm-hmm. via official government and private email since 2010. She was using her Hotmail account. Oh, damn. Uh, I'm sure the government's cool with using your private emails. Oh, yeah. I don't see why they have a problem with that at all. Never been any problem with that. Yeah. Also, Monday, Mick Mulvaney has a chan- has chance number two. Uh, this is his second uh, request or his second, like, second deadline, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he has a second deadline to submit proof that Trump and Putin didn't violate the Presidential Records Act when they met in secret. Mm. Uh, Tuesday, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook has to submit all information from the I'm 1015 secret Facebook group oh, to the House shit. Oversight Committee. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg, right? right. Sorry. <laughs> so so this is the uh, secret closed group of... Uh, Custom and Border, uh, border Patrol, Patrol agents. agents, yeah, yeah. Where they're like, oh, look at these dead people, ha ha. Yeah, oh, yeah. let's throw warm burritos at them. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, they're dead, so sad, oh well. You yeah, know. I'm 1050 really? means aliens in custody. It's like their code, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. radio code for mm-hmm. aliens in custody. Wednesday, Mike Flynn and Rick Gates are supposed to appear for testimony to the House Intelligence Committee. Yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe Rick Gates will come. He's kind of their bitch. He is, yeah. Uh, and he's, I think he's also going to be testifying in the Bijan Keon trial coming in July. Right. 
uh, this month. Uh, Pat Cipollone has a deadline to submit proof that no Presidential Record Act violations occurred under his watch, and Mick Mulvaney has his second deadline to submit documents in response to the 2017 hurricane response. Oh, shit. Mick Mulvaney's busy this week. Yeah, big week. And then Friday, oral arguments begin in the Trump v. Mazars uh, oversight committee case. Mm -hmm. That's court. That's in the courts. It's going through, and oral arguments begin. Judge Beryl Howell. Uh, also will release grand jury transcripts in the mystery company from country A subpoena battle. Oh, shit. On Friday. I don't know if we'll find out the name of the... I don't think but we'll find out But we're that much closer, though. We can get some clues, perhaps. More clues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Kevin McAleenan and Mark Morgan, two assholes, they're <laughs> supposed to appear before the House Oversight to testify on Trump's family separation policy. So that's Friday as well. So we have a big week ahead. You can sign up for our daily updates by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Mueller, she wrote. Guys, we'll be right back. Hey guys, so this week I thought to myself, what a cool job I have. I just introduced the former acting director of the FBI to the former deputy assistant to the attorney general. Uh, So I get to do a lot of weird stuff and I travel a lot and I speak in front of a lot of audiences and I meet with folks like these former ambassadors and attorneys general and agency directors and news people. And while I love wearing my comfy pants, I wish I could wear them all the time, these are more business attire events. But who says work appropriate can't be comfy, right? So Beta Brand not only looks amazing, but they're as comfortable as my yoga pants. They are my new favorite pants of all time. I'm totally obsessed. You need to get them. They're super comfortable. They come in different styles like boot cut, straight leg, cropped, and skinny. And while they, like, I usually just wear all black. They do come in all kinds of colors, though, including your standards like navy, gray, and khaki. But they also have seasonal and limited edition colors that they release monthly. These pants are made out of super soft, breathable, four-way stretch knit fabric. They're tagless and they're wrinkle resistant. They pack and travel brilliantly. Plus, they have incredible details like real belt loops, pockets, front buttons, and faux zippers. So I used to buy all my suiting from the standard places, and without fail, I'd be sitting in a meeting and the pants would be pinching me or they'd be sweaty and uncomfortable. I hated it. I was in a meeting one time and the tag was driving me nuts. Uh, and I, and it, of course, in my office, I use an exercise ball instead of an office chair, and my pants just didn't agree. So and that's why I replaced them all with beta brand dress pant yoga pants, and now I'm incredibly comfortable in stretchy all day breathable awesome i can't say enough amazing things about these pants so head to betabrand.com slash ag all lowercase and get 20 percent off yours that's betabrand.com slash ag for 20 percent off the most comfortable pants you'll ever wear to work all right welcome back hot notes so today we have a update on the one mdb story but first julissa what is going on in libya okay yeah so um <laughs> just oh I'll, I'll provide a little context here before i get into that but this week uh me and my girlfriend we got high and we started to discuss the refugee crisis at the border and we started to wonder whether putin may be orchestrating these crises just like he did with syria and europe so specifically he seems to have this pattern of weaponizing immigration to increase xenophobia and ultimately destable any country of his choice so i did some research and it seems like a lot of people have this exact same theory In fact, in 2016, the Independent reported that a NATO commander named General Phil Breedlove accused Russia and the Syrian government of bombing Syrian civilians in order to, quote, drive migration to Europe. And there were actually a ton of articles on this topic, all dating back to roughly three years ago. I hate that when I, like, have a brilliant idea Mm -hmm. and then you look it up and you're like... Oh, already out there. I swear to God, I came up with <laughs> Unitarianism when I was like 17 or oh, 18. That'd be a cool and I'm like, one, yeah. I have this great idea. We're all connected by energy. Because I was <laughs> about to be confirmed as a Catholic, and I'm like, this yeah. is dumb. But we're all the same thing. We're all made out. And then it turns out it's already a thing. But great minds, you know? It's flattering, I think. It's a good, you're on the right path. Yeah, I know. But when you think of this just giant cathartic idea, and then you find out, mm, well, that's how you know it's a good one. Someone beat you to the punch. <laughs> Correct, especially these intelligent, brilliant people. Yes. When you came up with this theory in the midweek, I'm like, dude. It really makes a lot of sense. And then we're going to get into Libya, too, because it's all connected. Um, but what I was also wondering is whether or not the same strategy is being applied to the Northern Triangle. So as we've reported on the show, Trump pulled aid from three Latin American countries, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. However, in June, the White House announced that they would restore some aid to the region, but would not allow for any further funding until they, quote, do more to reduce migrant flows to the U.S. <laughs> So basically, we know you're taking away your money. Yeah, that's like, a, hey, son, uh, I'm kicking you out of the house and taking away your money until you do more 
to live in a place and make money. Yeah. And like, you know, they're taking the resources and saying you need to do better or we're not going to give you more resources until you do better. It's like this weird loop of of nonsense. And who's to say they're in your 20s? Exactly. And their problems could very well be because of us. I was thinking if Trump is compromised by Putin, which is what this whole podcast is about, (laughs) then maybe we're a little fucking complicit in Putin's evil plans to conquer the world, whether we're directly helping him or just looking the other way. And speaking of Putin's evil plans to take over the world this week, getting to Libya, we learned that two Russians were arrested in Libya for meddling in their presidential elections. Classic. So, well, Russians meddling in elections? What? what? <laughs> Apparently, they also meddled in Madagascar's elections and a few other African countries. So I guess Putin has expanded his evil empire to Africa. And the funniest part about this whole story is that the name of the Russian troll factory that specifically targets African countries is called Fabrika Trolley, which is Russian for troll factory. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, they know. They know, and they want us to know. They know exactly what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of how it came up when yeah. we were talking about the two rats in Libya. Why are they trying to steal African elections? Maybe they're trying to drive refugees north across the Mediterranean Sea. Absolutely, yeah. And the two Russians that were arrested in Libya were also arrested with Gaddafi's son. You guys might remember his dad, the Libyan dictator. (laughs) You know, classic. And I guess his son is just picking up where his dad left off um, because the Russian meddling was supposed to be in favor of Gaddafi's son to help him gain power. So we're kind of at a place where dictators are once again successfully weaponizing xenophobia and using it for their political advantage. And our current president is totally cool with it because dictators are cool with him but at least these guys got it caught so that's obviously better than nothing but something else I learned this week is that Putin isn't just trying to take over the world by election meddling he's also trying to do it with agriculture so apparently Putin is seeking to quote minimize Russia's reliance on markets he can't access and to achieve food self-sufficiency by 2020 which sounds nice so perhaps another reason he's trying to take over Africa exactly oh my god they keep like robbing Africa like taking the resources Putin has even weaponized the war in the Middle East to advance his agricultural goals, specifically after Turkey shot down that Russian fighter jet along the Syrian border last November, Putin responded by, quote, banning a range of produce from its former ally. And so, the Ru- yeah, the Russian government even broadcast in their inspectors bulldozing over Turkish tomatoes. And now Pu- we will sell you aluminum tomatoes. Exactly. Yeah. And they all have like palomin tea in there. <laughs> and now Putin is growing an entire field of produce, uh, pretty much produce power using, quote, T-34 tank tomatoes. Like, I think that's the name of the actual device. And one Russian ar- agricultural officer said, we have big plans to drown the world in tasty Russian produce. So that's a really weird phrase, right? Drown the We're gonna world. We're going to drown the world in Russian tomatoes. Yeah, I get the feeling that Putin... Watch out, Paul Newman. Yeah, exactly. He might be trying to, like, just corner the market. I could see him just, like, scolding the earth and saying, <laughs> you got to come to me now for your tomatoes. Because he's doing that with all his neighboring countries. And I think he's just slowly starting to fuck over the world, destabilize people, flood the refugees, get yeah, people... Yeah, interesting how our tariffs are hurting farmers Exactly, here. yeah. So he's got all these different fronts for, for his, like, evil empire with, with the refugees and the race racism and then just taking people's food and like kind of like Stalin did like he claimed he had this five-year plan for like having all this food and then he just like kept him to himself and (laughs) yeah this is some crazy classic dictator shit yeah totally Um, lots of different parts but that's and and we see a lot of it here at home too. yeah yeah but that theory apparently has been circulating and and even NATO officers are are calling him out on it but that's really interesting yeah thank you so much for that reporting yeah yeah Um, that's really crazy uh, and uh, something else crazy this week, one MDB, the yes. Malaysian fund, where the Malaysian guy stole or laundered like hundreds of millions of dollars totally. uh, out of Malaysia, mm-hmm. stole from his country. I think it's like 60 million or something. No, yeah. it's like 280 million. It's a oh, lot of money. Shit, yeah. uh, even, oh, he gave back 60 million. Well, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's nice of him. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, so a bunch of people were being arrested in that. And this is of import because uh, I think that Jolo, who helped launder this money out using one of the Fuji's Pros Michelle. Yeah, Pros Michelle, yeah. Uh help help with from Brody, mm-hmm. Elliot Brody. They're all in it. Chris Christie. Yes. We're being paid. Uh Kazowitz, which is one of uh, Trump's lawyers. Mm-hmm. So they're all in on this shit. Leonardo DiCaprio had to testify. <laughs> that was the craziest part. <laughs> in this. I'm like, dude, the the day that all of a sudden Leonardo DiCaprio Ice Cube was wrapped up in this and the guy from the Fugees right (laughs) so Ice Cube had tried to get this guy to lend him uh, the fund tried to lend him money for his basketball league he's like a three man old guy basketball league (laughs) so cute and uh, he he failed to hand the money over and Ice Cube's partner heard him say you don't want my money you don't want my money oh yeah he's like everyone else took it Flynn took my money Mm -hmm. and and he's like whoa and so he went to tell the FBI like you're supposed to that's incredible yeah yeah 
So this is the one MDB fund. Totally. And I've I've often thought that maybe the secret company from country A could be one MDB. Yeah. It could be Malaysia. But there's so much in the public reporting about Malaysia, I figure Why like, would they keep that right. yeah, private? But something happened this week. They arrested another dude, right? Yeah, so they arrested the producer of Wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> Riza Aziz. So yeah, he's been arrested over the scandal and, and we reported that he was questioned last July for quote alleged theft and money laundering at the one MDB state investment fund. And so yeah, it's all coming home to roost. They waited a whole year and so that's kind of their counter argument. The people that are on the evil side of this are like, Why wait a year? Yeah, yeah. I mean it's just the government, right, doing its fucking job. It, like it takes crossing a minute. Off. Yeah, it takes a little while <laughs> to catch up with your shady ass. Sorry we couldn't account for all two hundred and thirty million dollars right. you laundered. Sorry we didn't catch you in the act. Swiss bank accounts, <laughs> which we time. had to trace through other shell companies <laughs> around the world. Exactly. You're welcome. They have the worst arguments, but they're so desperate that they just like they they're go into so court. Funny. And That'll say be this in their shit. filing. It took too long. Yeah, I'm not guilty. Look yeah. at how long it took. In the history books, we'll see that fucking quote. <laughs> what an asshole. Yeah, but that's that, and I'm sure many more shoes will drop. I'm hoping they all go down for this. But uh, one MDB is my favorite story, just because it includes all the famous people. Yeah, yeah. And then we actually found out through this that. Steve mm -hmm. from the Treasury has produced 44 movies. And he was even in a movie. Oh, man, I forgot the name of it, but it was like something really stupid. He has one acting role. He himself. does have one acting Yeah, it's he has like, one acting credit. It's a really dumb movie. It's but he's produced 44 movies. Yeah. And movie production, apparently, which we've learned through 1MDB and the Malaysia Scandal, fraud yeah. scheme, is that's a way to launder money. Totally, like real estate. So what are you doing, Steve? Mm-hmm. What's up, Steve? Mr. Treasury what you hiding Department who wants to lift, face. Yeah. lift <laughs> sanctions on Deripaska. He looks just like also all the cartoons. Also not a money launderer. Yeah, the cartoons they draw about Steve, he looks just like him. Like, they, they <laughs> nail that facial expression. He, perky and his lips. super hot girlfriend, who I'm sure loves him for his you Oh, know, totally. His soul. Yeah, for his great pure Whatever. soul. <laughs> he can print money. That's why she's with him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'm going to attempt to break down what happened in the 2020 Census Citizenship Question lawsuit this week. So, in March of 2018, Wilbur Ross said he was going to tack a citizenship question onto the census. Didn't give a reason. Mm -hmm. And then an army of critics have said the question could disenfranchise nearly 9 million people to skew the results to benefit white Republicans, specifically white Republicans. Yeah, it discourages the brown people from being a part of it, yeah. And that was uh, reinforced by the disclosure last month of a 2015 study by Hoffler. <laughs> I do man from two brains, Hoffler. Yeah. Hoffler, uh, who I call the grand wizard of gerrymandering. Mm -hmm. He's dead now, I'm so sad. Oh, yeah. Uh, that explained, his whole study explained how the citizenship question could be used to exclude people in such ways to hobble representation of Hispanics. That was their whole plan. And Democrats mm -hmm. and to help white Republicans, yeah. specifically It's white in his flash drive that he hid. Where did he <laughs> hide it? Under his mattress? His daughter found that shit. He keister stashed yeah. it. Yeah, his daughter totally turned him in. <laughs> she did. She's she did. She's like, look what I found. Because she kind of hates him. She said she grew up and he was always like about well, a small government. Asshole. Yeah, but she realized pretty quickly, yeah. Well, so last week the Supreme Court rejected Trump's stated reason for adding a citizenship question. But Chief Justice, he was using the Civil Rights or yeah, the, voting the Voting Rights Act. The yeah. Voting Rights we Act. We want to make sure everybody's voting we make, legally. Yeah. Hey, we're just supporting the Voting Rights mm -hmm. Act. Sure, dude. <laughs> and uh, Chief Justice Roberts said, "Nah, brah. <laughs> but he left open the chance that the administration could offer an adequate rationale. <sighs> like, you come up with a better reason, hit us up. I but, guess he's mm. like, try me. He probably doubts that they'll come up with one though." Yeah, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So Tuesday of this week, the Department of Justice lawyers, Trump's lawyers, abandoned the effort and told this judge, uh, hey, we're done. We're printing the census without the question. And the Commerce Secretary, Wilbur Ross, also to told Judge Hazel they had decided to remove the question once and for all. Mm -hmm. So we thought it was a settled deal. And then Trump tweeted the next day he wasn't giving up on this. And it was fake news. If you If you heard... That we were giving up. It's fake news. How is his news now fake news? <laughs> it's like it's yeah. your people. <laughs> Wilbur Ross's letter and emails to the and the Department of Justice lawyers to the judge, fake news. Yeah. So Wednesday, the judge was like, all right, fuckers, I, we have to have a conference call. So he had a call with the lawyers right before the 4th of July and the 3rd of July uh, from lawyers from both sides. And he decided everyone had until Friday at 2. <laughs> Fine, both lawyers on both sides. <laughs> to either offer a schedule for continuing the Maryland lawsuit or shut up. Yeah. Right. Basically, just, mm -hmm. we have to settle this Friday, too. All this is happening with a July 1st deadline to start printing the census, by the way, lest they imperil the schedule of the census itself. Mm. Then we learn Trump says he's thinking of using an executive order to get the citizenship question on the census. And yeah. Friday at 2, 
both parties submitted filings. They submitted their filings. The Department of Justice filing is stupid. It's not definitive. They just repeat that they've been asked to reevaluate all available options for Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're, we're trying to figure out a new reason Yeah, it's like stalling Like we have a plan to have a plan This is my professional and once we, report yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once we come up with a new reason We'll let you know mm -hmm. uh, That would <laughs> that, that is the dumbest thing And then if the Commerce Secretary Ross Adopts a new reason for adding the question That would be a new final agency action And the groups that sued before Would be entitled to challenge it mm. So the lower court injunction blocking the citizenship question remains in place. Yeah. And this is basically what happens when you lose. For sure. It just goes back, knocked back down, right? He doesn't want to say, we give up and we lose. He's coming back and saying, we might come up with a whole new suit later and we'll file it at right. that time. Everyone gets to do that that loses. Like, you aren't <laughs> special. Exactly. You dumbass. So like anyway. when they said they wouldn't interfere with Mueller's hearing. <laughs> it's like, you can't, you idiot. Duh. You're like, thanks, Seculo. Right. We're not going to try to block this. Oh, well, that's good. So you generous can't. of you. Yeah. <laughs> so the lower court injunction blocking the question remains in place and the census is printing forms without it, or they say. Okay. Uh, the plaintiff's filing. <clears throat> the, our side mm -hmm. asked to move forward with discovery regarding the equal protection civil rights claim that the newly found Huffler files should be uh, considered. Definitely. And they, they don't want to wait for the administration <laughs> to decide if they have a new reason. Right. Uh, and the DOJ filed a thing against that saying, we disagree with that. It would be premature and inefficient to do this, to let them continue with discovery on this, uh, you know, idea before we decide what we're going to do. What? The judge said, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> discovery can continue. You shut up. If you come up with a reason, file it in other... I don't fucking nice. care. Nice. Good luck. Have a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Uh, notably missing from the Department of Justice filing is any sort of timeline for the review of adopting a new rationale. No timeline. Just whenever we want. Mm. But there is a 25-day clock ticking since the SCOTUS decision on 627 to ask for a rehearing. Oh. So they only have 25 days after June 27th. And also missing is the mention of a possible executive order that Trump floated or the, quote, four or five ways Trump <laughs> suggested might be on the table. Sneaking it in like he's going to like sneak it to the factory and just start we like writing We do the executive order. We have four or five other ways. <laughs> he has his own printers at home. This. He had the White House just printing out his racist sentences. <sighs> Such an asshole. <laughs> So Trump at this time is still trying to get his way, saying he'll evaluate all the options, uh, though Judge Hazel did order, like I said, discovery can go ahead uh, with regards to considering the Huffler evidence, despite the Trump administration's request to delay it pending their feelings mm -hmm. about some things. So that's mm -hmm. what's going on. Yeah. Wow. We're on the brink of a Supreme Court decision being defied. I know. For racism, once again. I'm sort of excited. I hate that it's about racism, but well, I'm it's like, just about fucking time. I dare that people you know. to defy a Supreme Court order, and then I dare you, the Senate, to acquit him. Exactly. On that. Yeah. Fucking show everyone thing. your truest colors because they've seen him be, you know, a rapist. They've seen him be like all I'm these things. I'm almost like, yeah. Beavis. Nah, do it. Right. I'm with you. I am Cornelio. <laughs> I will defy your Scotus butthole. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. I love it. You're in D&D &D mode? <laughs> sort of. I dig it. All right, guys. You ready for sabotage? Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Biggest news of the week. The thing that made me the happiest in months. We got word Saturday night that the feds in the Southern District of New York have arrested Jeffrey Epstein, and he will be arraigned in federal court in New York on Monday on charges that he molested dozens of underage girls in New York and Florida. It may say molested when it was rape, but I, I'm glad they're even, like, calling him out. Yeah. We don't know what the charges are right now. And, in fact, they need to actually be new charges because you can't bring him up on the old charges because he was acquitted of those charges, or at least a deal was made on those oh, charges. Oh, thank you for clearing that up. I was convinced that it's, like, rolled over, but these are the counter charges. After these are he, other yeah. charges. That, that, I think. So they it must might be. not be the rape charges that were previously listed. It might be other rape charges. Because okay. they only brought, uh, you know, Acosta only brought a handful when the FBI had dozens of women. Absolutely. So maybe the FBI sex trafficking... Because there's no statute of limitations on sex trafficking right. for federal crime. So maybe they said, well, we have all these other witnesses. Mm -hmm. And now they're bringing charges on everything else. Right. And I'm glad this happened. Even though Acosta's in charge of sex trafficking, they still were able to do this. So the FBI is independent of Acosta as the Department of... What yes. Is he? And what, yeah. you're, what you're talking about is Acosta, mm -hmm. Alex Acosta, is the person who was the U.S. attorney in Florida who mm -hmm. gave uh, Epstein this deal. Yeah. In 2007, by the way, so if any Trump supporters come at you and say, the deal was made under Obama and Mueller <laughs> let it happen, and, and Lynch, asshole. Yeah. First of all, Loretta Lynch wasn't 
the <laughs> she wasn't the uh, AG until 2015. They need a timeline. Uh, Obama <laughs> was certainly not president in 2007. The where was he at Katrina? Exactly. <laughs> uh, so just don't even just don't go, entertain that. Just yeah. go. You know, time's linear, bro. 2007. <laughs> really? We need T-shirts. Hmm. Time. Time's linear, bro. Time is linear. <laughs> uh, apparently, Obama's been president forever. Since yeah. Before definitely uh, Donald Trump. But what you're what you're talking about here is that Acosta, who was that attorney general, gave him this sweetheart deal where he didn't really have to go to jail. It was like an in and out thing. He never slap really on went. the wrist. Yeah. And he made it so that when he pleaded guilty to these charges, he only pleaded guilty to one charge. And they made that the one charge a 16 year old mm-hmm. so that he did not have to register as a sex oh offender. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Even though there were multiple underage 14, girls. 13 year olds. Yes. Yes. They and they're the 16 all underage, year old so that he wouldn't have to do this. Totally. And now Acosta is Trump's labor secretary. He is in the cabinet right now. And so many people don't know about this. But when they hear about it, they lose their fucking minds. Yeah. Yeah. So this is all according this news. This reporting is according to sources who spoke to the Daily Beast and the Miami Herald. We have to hand it to them for doing this reporting for years and being on top of this. And NBC New York is now uh, and Washington Post. Everyone's they're starting to cover it because of the arrest. Yeah, but corroborating like, this has been for so long. I'm just glad it's finally happening. Uh, and this comes two weeks after the Justice Department announced it would not throw out his 2008 non-prosecution agreement. This is Barr's Justice Department saying we're not throwing out the non-prosecution agreement, his little deal, mm-hmm. even though a federal judge ruled it was illegal. Yeah. Word is he was arrested Saturday night by FBI pursuant to a sealed indictment that will be unsealed on Monday. Oh. Which is weird to me. Like, they didn't unseal it immediately, which makes me think, they think there could be other arrests. Oh, uh, Alan Dershowitz. Oh, right. my gosh. What's yes. up, bitch? <laughs> so uh, his bail hearing is Monday, and that's crucial because sources have told the Miami Herald that if he's let out on bail, he'll disappear. He will. He'll Flight do the risk. old space man goodbye. <laughs> oh he's ghosting. God. Yeah. So Acosta, in my opinion, must now resign. Mm-hmm. This is the guy who is the labor secretary currently in charge of sex trafficking. Got a who covered job up sex trafficking. Trump. Yeah, but I'm sure Trump has nothing to do with it. And Obama was the president. That's how people get the job for Trump. He's like, can you <laughs> fuck up this department? The best. <laughs> you know. He didn't get secretary of the army. At exactly. Least. <laughs> uh, so there's several big names that could be involved with this, including Alan Dershowitz, like you said, Bill Clinton. Yes. You expect him. Take him to be wrapped up in this, and I'm fine. Yes. Prince Andrew. That is, is sad. Part of this. That's really sad. And Trump himself, who owned a modeling agency for what? Oh, trafficking women? Perhaps, yeah. And then when I think of the children missing at the border, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, that's extra gross. Not yeah, that's like a whole that. different bean situation there. That yeah, is yeah. super gross beans, mm-hmm. and, and that's messed up. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're all in power. They're in control of these things, and they're all fucking pedophiles. And they're, they're just, all disgusting. Yeah. They all come from Christian family values. Oh, of course, places. yeah. So anyway, we'll let you know Monday night during our daily update for patrons. That's we do that. Of... We do a daily update every day. And they're so fun. We talk patrons. about a lot of things there, like jokes and stuff that never make it to the main show. So yeah. people should check it out. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see how it shakes out. And we're definitely going to talk about that on the Monday. It might be a good time to become a patron. I think so. With the video feed, I'm going to yeah. watch myself. The webcam coming up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go and, home and just watch myself. And ad-free <laughs> daily beans. We're just going to... Fun gonna, time, man. Fun month. Pride season for San Diego. Pride. Just, yeah. you know, be proud and become a patron. Hell yes. Uh, and speaking of indictments, are you ready for the Fantasy Indictment League? Yes. I'm going to be indicted! No, wait, it's going to be a... Indicted! Honey, dick. Indicted! Honey. I'm going to be indicted! Hold oh, it, they can't. It's going to be okay. Just calm down. I can't calm down. I'm going to be indicted! All right, just me and you. Whew, all right. Who's cool first? extra picks. <laughs> uh, anyway, if, if anyone had Jeffrey Epstein, go ahead and give yourself a point. Because moving forward, any indictment that involves in any way the Trump administration is going to count since we can't really know what was handed off by Mueller because it's all redacted. Mm -hmm. So any indictment involving the Trump administration is on the table for the Fantasy Indictment League (laughs) going forward now and on into the Daily Beans. Uh, So anyway, it's going to count. I dig it. I wish I would have thought of him because he was long overdue. But honestly, I didn't think they were going to succeed in getting him so soon. I'm glad. I'm like so stoked about that. I was shocked. I was like, what? That's crazy had a really great night. Yeah, everyone was talking about it. He was trending. Yeah. So Tits McGee uh, was supposed to go first this week, but she's on vacation. So (laughs) I get to go first. And I picked the Trump Foundation because of Trump's Twitter tantrum about New York AG. That's good. Tish James this week. A lot of people confuse that with the Epstein thing because yeah. the Epstein thing is federal. It's Southern District of New York. Oh. That's pardonable. It's a pardonable crime. I was going to say, I thought that was a state thing. Okay. And Cuomo hasn't signed that law yet that says New York Double can, jeopardy yeah, thing. The exemption yeah. for presidential pardons. He, he, he should though. And he, like we found out last week uh, with Harry Lippman, he said, it's the pardon that's the trigger. So yes. ex post facto only happens 
with a pardon and it, we're still a long way away from that so there's time but i'm going with the trump foundation because there's something going on i there. mean clearly those beans are brewing um i'm gonna go with corsi oh nice mm-hmm. he's such a butthole with his thing <laughs> april april <laughs> anal opening <laughs> I'm going to go with Dershowitz. Oh, yeah. That was going to be my pick. That's oh, fair. I will sorry. take Brody's gross ass. Brody? Brody, my ex. Your ex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. I'm going to go with superseding Manafort indictments. Mm-hmm. Smart. Uh, I'll take Eric Prince. <gasps> yeah. I'm going to go with Ken Downing, Manafort's lawyer. I think he's going to be slapped with a contempt charge. Mm-hmm. Um, I will do Trump org. I did Trump. No, did I did Trump Foundation. Yeah, there's so many, right? <coughs> <Three>. <coughs> yeah, okay. Then I'm doing the inaugural. Okay. What? Nice. And I think, let's see, one, <coughs> two, three, four. So this is your last one. Yeah, okay. And that I, was my last one? That was, yeah. It went by fast. We're used to oh, like- Oh, shit. I take that back then. Okay. If that's my last one, I want stone. Superseding stone. You got it. Thank you. Better pick. I will do inaugural. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we are done. All right, cool, guys. That's the Fantasy Indictment League. If you want to play, join the closed Facebook group. Uh, you just have to become a patron. You already know how to do that. Guys, we'll be right back. Hey guys, summer is here, and I just started using the amazing non-toxic products from Grove. After, you know, summer gets here, I start rearranging all my stuff, I like to clean house a little bit, and Grove makes shopping for healthier home products super affordable and very easy, and so I can trust all of their awesomeness. Uh, They pick all the products, they make sure that they're sustainable and and non-toxic and awesome. So over half a million families shop on Grove.co for non-toxic dish soap, plant-based skin care, which I love, and tree-free bath tissue, so nice. So Grove takes all the work out of, like I said, having to research the sustainability yourself and the healthiness and what's best and what's natural and eco-friendly, and and they do it all to you. And they deliver straight to your door, saving you more time and and more money. So right now, you can get an exclusive offer from Grove on Mrs. Meyers. Select your favorite new spring scents like peony, lilac, and mint. And new customers will get a free cleaning set in these limited edition scents when you place your first order for $20. Uh, There's the free Mrs. Meyers spring hand soap, or a free Mrs. Meyers spring dish soap, or the free Mrs. Meyers spring multi-surface spray, my favorite. It cleans everything. And there's also Grove Collaborative Cleaning Caddies and the Grove Collaborative Walnut Scrubber Sponges, which are really nice too, and very sustainable, eco-friendly. So everything's available at Grove, and it's healthier for you and the planet. You already know it. You don't have to worry about it. And they work so amazingly. They carry all my favorites, like the Mrs. Meyer stuff, but they have seventh generation, which I've been using for years, Burt's Bees, uh, and Grove products. And I recently got all my eco-friendly seventh generation cleaning products from Grove, and I was amazed by the price and the convenience. And I found some products I didn't know about, like all the Mrs. Meyer stuff. Uh, Lilac is one of my favorite scents. So try Grove now before this exclusive offer runs out. And for a limited time, our listeners get a three-piece cleaning set from Mrs. Meyer Spring Scents, a free 60-day VIP membership, and a surprise bonus gift when you sign up and place an order of $20 or more. Just check out Grove and our special offer at grove.co slash ag. That's grove.co, not dot com. Grove.co slash AG. Again, Grove.co slash AG. You'll be glad you did. With me today is MSNBC legal analyst. He spent 30 years as a federal prosecutor with the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office, and he spent a lot of time working with Mueller. So please welcome Glenn Kirshner. Glenn, thanks for coming on Mueller, she wrote. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're so happy to have you on because we want to get some expert insight uh, into Mueller before his upcoming testimony to the House Judiciary and Intelligence Committees. I think it's about in 10 days from the airing of this episode. And uh, those of us who are keenly familiar with what's in his report and have been following this all along probably aren't going to learn anything new uh, and might be slightly feeling disappointed with his testimony. But that's not really what makes this Im- appearance so important, is it? No, I mean... There's been so much disinformation put into the public square by Trump, by Barr, by all of their enablers that I think part of what we're part of the reason Bob Mueller's testimony is going to be so important. It's it's not only to bring to the public's attention his findings, um, particularly with respect to the many felony obstruction of justice offenses Trump committed. But it's going to be hopefully to um, rebut the epic disinformation campaign that Trump and company have been waging against the American people with their uh, with their very effective mantra. No obstruction, no collusion. Um, Hopefully, Bob Mueller will 
find some ways and hopefully Congress will come up with some pointed, precise questions to help Bob Mueller find some ways to combat that disinformation campaign. Yeah, and, and that's all. Yeah, thanks to uh, Attorney General uh, William Barr, whose uh, four page quote unquote summary of Mueller's findings uh, sort of it, it totally misled the public. We saw that woman in the Justin Amash rally say, gosh, I had no idea there wasn't anything uh, about Trump that was negative or there wasn't anything negative in, in the Mueller report about Trump. So it's it's I think that that's kind of why this uh, testimony is so important. And Mueller has said that his report is his testimony, and and he warned that he won't talk about anything that's not in his report. But as you were just indicating, do you think if, if the questions are asked properly that he might answer some of the critical uh, outstanding questions we have, like was there actually no collusion or no obstruction, or if the president weren't the president, would he be indicted? I, I guess my inclination is when Bob Mueller says my report is my testimony, he means it. But, you know, he, he is a by-the-book guy, law and order. He's a rule follower. So I actually think what you referenced a minute ago when Bill Barr issued his um, misleading summary of Mueller's report, it really cut against Bob Mueller's grain to issue a written rebuttal of that and say, hey, look, Barr, you mischaracterized my findings and conclusions and you're misleading the public. Cut it out. That is unlike Bob Mueller because he's sort of the king of circumspection. But, you know, he's also a soldier. And in the middle, I used to be an army jag in the 80s. We are taught that you have to, number one, obey a lawful order. But number two, you have to disobey an unlawful order. And sometimes those two things bump up against one another. But going back to your question, I think if the, the questions are precise enough, then Mueller will have to answer some things, even if they are somewhat outside of his report. So, for example, one of the questions I would ask him is, look, Special Counsel Mueller, you've heard President Trump say over and over again, your investigation found no obstruction. Is that true or false? I think if he's answering, even within the four corners of his 448-page report, the answer is, that is false. Our investigation did not find no obstruction. Same question with respect to collusion. Um, so I think if crafted properly, I, I hate to say some of this is an exercise in getting some usable sound bites from Bob Mueller, but he, here's what I would do. If you can get those sound bites where Mueller says definitively, no, we did not find no obstruction. We did not find no collusion. Then I think it's on the media. Every time they broadcast uh, Trump or Barr, as they do a thousand times a day saying no obstruction, no collusion, they should be obliged to put up immediately after that. That is false, says Bob Mueller. So I hate to say it's an exercise in debunking disinformation, but because the lies got a you know several week head start coming out of Barr's mouth, the truth has forever been playing catch up. And it has it has not been catching up all that effectively. Yeah, totally. And and you mentioned um, Mueller writing that uh, scathing, maybe not scathing to us, but scathing to Mueller, that letter to Barr about his and, and apparently it was one of a couple of letters he wrote before the before the report was released uh, to Congress and the public. Um, how important is it? Uh, because we read in The Threat by Andy McCabe that when somebody like Mueller, particularly you know, Mr. Circumspect, goes to paper like that, it means a lot more than someone else just, you know, sending a, a reply on Twitter or writing a letter. So how important is it that he went to paper on that and also made his 10 minute public statement? I wasn't expecting either of those things from him. Yeah. Writing a, um, a rebuttal to the attorney general who technically at that moment was still Bob Mueller's boss was, uh, you know, I'm going to say out of character for Mueller. I mean, ordinarily, what we would do under those circumstances, if we had a dispute in our chain of command, we would go behind closed doors with our boss and we would say, hey, boss, I've got some real concerns here. But I think Mueller recognized how high the stakes were. And he also recognized how dangerous Barr's mischaracterization was and that it was done, I think, with... Um, I'm going to say evil intent, 
Uh, and Mueller felt compelled to put in writing his rebuttal and his correction of what Barr said. So I think for him, that was um, difficult, but necessary. And, you know, I appreciate that Mueller said, listen, I'm going to stay within the four corners of my report. The problem is, once he raises his right hand and swears to tell the truth, he will have to answer questions that are sort of proper questions in that they don't violate grand jury secrecy rules. So they wouldn't require him to disclose matters that are before the grand jury um, or compromise ongoing investigations. So I think those are two areas where he can decline to answer because those are legitimate reasons to decline to answer those questions. Beyond that, if there are questions that are posed that require him to go beyond the four corners of the report, you know, he's raised his hand and sworn to tell the whole truth. He's going to have to answer those questions um, as long as they are sort of properly f phrased. Uh, my concern is that, you know, the Republicans are going to want to ask him about dossiers and spying on the Trump campaign as a distraction. And the Democrats may want to push Mueller well beyond the report to a place he's not comfortable going, you know, like if the president were a private citizen, wouldn't you have indicted him for obstruction of justice? I can tell you as a career prosecutor, the answer is, oh, hell yes. And But I don't know that Mueller will answer that question because of the way he has you know, already signaled that, listen, the criminal justice system is not the place to formally accuse a sitting president of crimes. That place is the Congress. And, you know, Basically, Mueller's report was an impeachment referral, plain and simple. How Congress hasn't gotten that or why they are declining to open impeachment hearings has me scratching my big bald head every day. <laughs> yeah, uh, us too. Believe, believe me. Um, and, you know, it, so, something like the question of if he were a private citizen, would you indict him? I'm I'm. I'm almost sure, and I haven't worked with Mueller at all, but I I just imagine him saying, I'm not going to answer any hypothetical questions. Um, but is, is anyone actually consulting the Democrats on how to ask Mueller these questions? Because I think that's very important. I assume so, um, but I, I don't know it as a, as a matter of fact. I think you should. I think you should, and I think uh, David Priest should probably get in there and be, <laughs> who briefed him on a daily basis to be like, all right, here's how you ask Bob Mueller questions, and here's what he won't answer. I, I'm, I'm hoping they have some good consultants uh, in, that, in that vein. But, uh, and I, you had mentioned the Republicans, and we know from public reporting already the Republicans are planning on attacking Mueller. Uh, how do you think I'm I'm very interested to see how he responds to questions or at least statements that aren't questions. You know how they do that. That wasn't a question from folks like Jim Jordan and Matt Gates and Devin Nunes and Louis Gohmert, who I don't consider to be very intelligent. Yeah, I mean, those men are a little more than gum on the bottom of Bob Mueller's shoe. He will be unflinching in the way he deals with their nonsense and shenanigans, which is all it's going to be. You know, it so reminds me of when I was in a basically trial court prosecutor for 30 years, and I would have defense attorneys who would cross-examine my witnesses about everything other than the facts of what they saw. And that's what these Republicans are going to do. They're going to talk to Bob Mueller about everything other than the fact that Bob Mueller found extreme coordination between the Trump campaign and the Russians in volume one and 10 or 11 instances of obstruction of justice by the president of the United States in volume two. I would bet that the Republicans aren't going to ask him a single question about those topics. Yeah, no, I, I doubt it myself. Uh, and I, I imagine he just simply won't entertain shenanigans, as you said. He doesn't seem like a shenanigan entertainer. So um, this is all Congress. You know, this is all the stuff that's going on in Congress. And, and as you mentioned, they still have an open and impeachment inquiry, which I think would benefit them in trying to get these materials and that they need and the testimonies they need, at least speed it up through the courts, uh, as Mueller clearly gave them a map to do. But right now, there is a potential for the Trump administration to defy a Supreme Court decision if they aren't already by tr by trying to add a citizenship question to the census. And I was wondering what role you think the judiciary could potentially take in saving our asses versus Congress. 
Yeah, well, thank goodness the state of our judiciary remains strong because it may be our last hope if Congress sort of remains as timid as Congress has been thus far. Now, let me tell you, before I move on to the judiciary, I hope Congress has a plan. I hope Nancy Pelosi and company have a plan. Um, and, you know, I keep hoping for something good to happen. Um, and I keep being disappointed. But uh, I, I can't help but wonder what it is that was collected up as a result of the counterintelligence investigation. Maybe there is still something big coming that is going to make you know, 10 counts of obstruction of justice by the president look like jaywalking offenses. I don't know. Maybe there's something holding Pelosi and company back that is going to actually be so much bigger than the Mueller report. And that's why they are hesitating. But be that as it may, I think the courts have shown us over and over again that they are perhaps our last best hope at making sure this is going to sound ridiculously hyperbolic, but that our republic survives. Because every time a consequential issue has now made its way into the courts, whether it was the sort of lawfulness of congressional subpoenas issued for Trump's banking records and financial records, you know, we saw Judge Mehta in the D.C. Federal District Court. He's an old, uh, not old, he's young, but he's a former public defender in my backyard in the D.C. courts. And he's a very strong judge and a very strong lawyer and a very strong person. And, you know, he took the administration to task when Trump's lawyer stood up and said, yeah, the, the House has no right to issue these subpoenas for my records. Uh, you know, Judge Mehta knocked that down at light speed. So the courts are doing the right thing. They can do the right thing quickly. We saw that again with Judge Ramos in New York in similar litigation over the uh, subpoenas for financial records from Deutsche Bank and Cap One for the president. The president's lawyers went down in flames very quickly in that one. And I know they're appealing and it's still ongoing, but the courts can move quickly and efficiently and the courts still care deeply about the rule of law. And most judges care deeply about governmental misconduct. I was in the courtroom when Judge Sullivan, whom I litigated before when I was a, a prosecutor in D.C., took Flynn's lawyers to task. I mean, that was a thing of beauty to watch, and it gave me patriotic goosebumps because it's like the courts still care. And, and I think they can move these things through the courts pretty quickly once the House starts filing you know, actions to enforce these subpoenas for tax returns and, and what have you. Um, you know, when we look back, we we can see that there is a precedent for the courts to move quickly, you know, back during Watergate when um, Jaworski issued a subpoena for Nick, the Nixon tapes. I think he issued it in April of 74 and the Supreme Court got it. It worked its way up through the federal system and they resolved it in July of 74 unanimously against the president and in favor of the enforceability of the subpoena. You know, now these are different times, but I do think the courts know what's at stake. And I think the courts can and will move these things through quickly once Congress begins a steady stream of filing, you know, actions to support these subpoenas and enforce these subpoenas. Yeah, exactly. And you're right. There's so much that's unknown. You know, as I'm working my way or worked my way through reading the Mueller report very carefully, I know Mueller said up front that, hey, there's a lot of evidence we couldn't get because... People lied to us. People destroyed evidence. People used encrypted apps. People, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I think he was mostly talking about seemingly Manafort at that point who breached his plea agreement. And I'm wondering, and I don't see any redactions for harm to an ongoing matter in the Manafort section in volume one, but what happens when you breach your plea agreement? All those crimes that you would have been charged with, I would think you would be charged with after you breach your plea agreement. And I don't see any of that, all of his lies and, uh, you know, any coordination or any, but, you know, I mean, he said that he didn't have evidence or couldn't establish evidence or find enough evidence to, to charge these as a, as a grander conspiracy. But like, what happens to all of those charges that Manafort was forgiven uh, because he was cooperating after he stopped cooperating? And I, I just don't, I don't see it anywhere. Maybe it's in the counterintelligence stuff, but it's, it seems to be missing to me. Yeah. So ordinarily when a cooperator falls from grace and we um, withdraw from the plea agreement, 
we we are free to charge any crimes that we decided against charging or, or we agreed not to charge in light of the cooperation. But there's a second issue that we always have to confront under those circumstances, and it's the sort of the time and the resources and the energy that we would have to put into prosecuting somebody who has already been convicted a couple of times over, serving seven plus years, about to be prosecuted by the state of New York, hopefully successfully, and put another number of years on top of his head. Um, do we want to gear up for another prosecution that's going to take a whole team of FBI agents and prosecutors away from what they're doing, which is hopefully going after other wrongdoers? So it doesn't shock me that we didn't, you know, sort of launch into new charges against Manafort because he breached his plea agreement. Um, you know, that's always um, uh, it's, a, it's a challenging issue to confront when, you know, I, I always said that we are the federal government. I was the federal government when I was a federal prosecutor, but believe it or not, we still had limited resources. We had limited number of prosecutors. We had a limited amount of time to bring charges against a whole lot of criminals. So it's not always easy to bring every charge you would like to bring in a perfect world. Yeah, no, it just seems like these are specifically unique circumstances to which I think the public's right to know about those crimes that could have included coordination or conspiracy uh, might have just been decided not to be prosecuted in favor of the fact that he's probably already going to jail for the rest of his life. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, but it, these just seem like unusual circumstances to me. I know. And it sure seems like, you know, I, I was a very aggressive prosecutor. Um, I also like to think I aggressively protected the rights of every defendant that I prosecuted by making sure that I was, you know, abiding by the rules and the law and, you know, holding, for example, uh, if there was police work that was inappropriate and that may have violated a defendant's rights, well, it was my job to step in, remedy it, turn it over to the defense and dismiss a case if it was that dramatic a violation of a defendant's rights. And I did that when I was chief of homicide in D.C. on, on a number of occasions. Um, but I... Um, I hesitate to say this because um, I, you know, Bob Mueller taught me how to be a federal slash homicide prosecutor when he was my chief at the U.S. Attorney's Office in D.C. But it's hard for me to conceive of how there is no larger conspiracy charge for everything we learned about what Manafort did, what Gates did, sharing polling data with Kalimnik and and rolling into that, the Trump Tower meeting with the Russians and Don Jr.'s participation and all of the 140 plus contacts that Bob Mueller laid out in volume one. I understand if you're going to go after the king, you got to kill the king. But boy, it sure looks like a conspiracy that many prosecutors could bring and many juries would convict on. Um, again, I don't want to second guess Bob Mueller. I always trusted his judgment before. Um, so, you know, we, we have to live with the decisions he made. Yeah, it's weird. At least if we knew why. But I suppose saying, well, we were going to charge him with all these other crimes, but we don't have the resources or we, he's already going to jail. That's going to taint any future jury. Uh, you can't just come out and say those kind of things, but uh, it would be irresponsible. But yeah, just like you were saying, the conversations in that August 3rd meeting with Manafort where he discussed um, the three specific states, four specific states, uh, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Wisconsin with Kalimnik and gave him the polling data. And then it just so happens Trump won by 80,000 votes in those three states to steal the Electoral College. And and it just like what key piece of evidence is missing uh, to, to not yeah. be able to tie those together. I feel you on that. So but it is interesting. And I do trust Mueller's judgment. There has to be a reason I, I can't find it in the declinations. But, you know, we'll see. I mean, maybe there's like you said, more out there that we just don't know about yet. Yeah, there are 14 referrals. I think a couple of them are cases and the others are pending investigations to several U.S. attorney's offices. Now, unfortunately, they are still sort of at the whim of a Bill Barr because they're at various U.S. attorney's offices. But, you know, at least they are out there and hopefully they are moving forward. And as hard as it is for us to sit, to take a wait and see approach, given what we're experiencing every day by a runaway president, um, we unfortunately are going to have to wait and see what those other 14 matters, 
you know, what, what is produced by those. Yeah, definitely. And then hopefully we'll get some counterintelligence information from Schiff and the Intel Committee, but probably nothing that, <laughs> of substance that we can look at as citizens. But, uh, you know, maybe in 30 or 40 years, they'll declassify all of it. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, former, former federal prosecutor, D.C. Chief of Homicide, Army veteran. Thank you for your service. And MSNBC legal analyst, Glenn Kirshner. Glenn, thanks for coming on Mueller, she wrote. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right, guys, that's our show. Uh, Again, Jordan sends her love Mm -hmm. uh, and we send her our love uh, to get well soon. And she is Tits McGee. She's (laughs) on vacation. Um, I can't wait to go to Philly. It's going to be so cool at UPenn. I'm so stoked to see everybody and have our little meet and greet the next day. And then the Lion King comes out on the 19th. We'll have a full week there. That's going to kill me. I know. It's going to kill me. It's a lot. It's It's a lot of of feels. It's going to make it happen. Uh, That was a huge movie for me when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Uh, I think everybody feels that about the Lion King. It's like such a classic. And when I say I was a kid, I was 19. I feel you. No, no. I were kid. Kiddish. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be great. Yeah, I'm excited for all the shows. I felt like a kid until seriously two years ago. Yeah, I still do. It's totally fine. I would as well. Uh, And so what do we have? Philly the 17th, Mm -hmm. Mueller's testimony, and then the meet and greet on the 18th. And we're going to send you that information. Patrons, by the way, you get a special deal where we're going to actually be viewing the Mueller uh, testimony at the Annenberg School. And if you're a ticketed patron to the Philly show and you're coming to the meet and greet, you can come watch the testimony with us the day before the show. It's so be fun. Awesome. Right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And everything. Mm, we got excited. Seattle, San Fran, we got Boston. We got a lot of shows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, San Francisco is going to be awesome. That's Absolutely. August 30th. Uh, and also joining us in Philly is Andrew Torres from Opening Arguments. Yes, love podcast. him. And joining us in Chicago, July 27th, Renato Mariotti. Hell yeah. And also, it's just Chicago. I'm going to have to try to meet john cusack you know that yeah we're gonna stalk him we're gonna find we him chat. i'm yeah, just gonna yeah. have to like walk around with a boom box we'll keep you guys posted held up in the air and yeah maybe he'll just walk out and the bean the chicago bean was vandalized i hope they clean it up before <gasps> we get there or we'll clean it we can clean it we'll make it happen yeah yeah we'll have a bean fundraiser <laughs> but i, I will just it. i'll walk around with a boom box john cusack will just appear from behind the bean wearing a trench coat oh be it's beautiful it all comes together doing karate kickboxing <laughs> What did he say? I don't want to sell or buy anything produced. I don't want to buy or produce anything sold, and I don't want to produce or sell anything bought. He's or such sold. an interesting man. <laughs> I want a complex box, individual. And I want to date your daughter, sir. <laughs> uh, it's just fantastic. Yeah, he's always getting to shit on Twitter. <laughs> what an independent mind that is. He does, right? He's yeah. always a shit starter. He's he a is. shit stirrer. That's mm-hmm. his profession. Yeah. And I appreciate it. Uh, gross point blank. Guys, have a very safe and wonderful week. Uh, patrons, we'll talk to you tomorrow. And we're going to find out what's going on. Hell yeah. With all this With shit. the Epstein. Yeah. My favorite news of the week. I'm really stoked. Oh, I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. And it sucks that we're at this point where that's what we have to look forward to. But I mean, hey, we're oh, in this it's place. It's a win. It feels good. The world is like this. We it's can't really, you know, so, change it. So but we can nice make it better from now on. Yeah. That somebody uh, who has been arrested by the Southern District of New York. And uh, important to note, it was the public corruption unit that did this case, not the sex crimes unit, which means it has to do with public government officials. Whoa. What? Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Take Bill. You can have him. I'm going to repeat that. Fine. Yeah, just Bye. please take him. Don't even argue with me. Like, he <laughs> loves balloons. Just all you have to do Keep is like. Hillary, take Bill. You just have to like walk out with a bunch of balloons and he'll follow you. Yeah. And he'll be like, oh. She had to know this was coming. I will never blame Hillary for Unless she covered it up. But I don't think she. I mean, I never had evidence of that. But yeah, Bill and liked her, but I voted for her. Exactly. And I will vote again and for her. the Democrat 2020. Yeah. Guys, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I've been AG. I've been Jaleesa Johnson. I'm Tits McGee. And this is Muller She Wrote. Muller She Wrote is produced and engineered by AG with editing and logo design by Jaleesa Johnson. Our marketing consultant and social media manager is Sarah Lee Steiner, and our subscriber and communications director is Jordan Coburn. Fact checking and research by AG, and research assistance by Jaleesa Johnson and Jordan Coburn. Our merchandising managers are Sarah Lee Steiner and Sarah Hirschberger Valencia. Our web design and branding are by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios, and our website is MullerSheWrote.com. 